today's culture, words that might be used to describe farming are hard, dirty, and old. But the truth is, is that as science advances, so does agriculture. Farming has moved far past people's ideas and expectations, and aquaponics is one of those ways. Techniques have been discovered to grow plants without soil, called hydroponics. Traditionally, the soil provides nutrients. But in hydroponics, it is added to the water. Ways to raise and farm fish have also been developed, called aquaculture. Somewhere along the line, the clean, efficient, and productive system was invented, called aquaponics. By combining the growth of fish and plants, two foundations of our diet can be grown in Canada. Fish waste produces ammonia, which is normally toxic to fish. Naturally grown bacteria, called nitrosomas, convert the ammonia into nitrates, and nitrobacteria convert the nitrates into nitrates. The plants then use the nitrates as nutrients, cleaning the water and continuing the cycle. Incredibly, it allows protein and vegetables to be grown together without any added soil or water. I was interested in this after seeing it in a teacher's classroom the break. I wanted to learn more about the process and see if I could do it myself. I learned that there are three common types of aquaponics. Deep water culture is most common for commercial use. Large pools of water have plants floating on top and are connected to fish tanks. Nutrient film technique is newer and it has pipes that the plants are planted in and the water is also run through. Media based is most similar to traditional farming and most common for home production. Grow beds are filled with the material such as clay pellets or gravel that are the then flooded with the water from the fish tanks. What really differentiates this from traditional farming is the fact that there's no extra water, no dirt, and no dirt. Last winter, I finally decided to try this on my own. I bought 13 goldfish, some herbal seeds, and was donated a 20 pound tank. I got a grow light, a water pump, an air pump, a timer, and clay pellets, and started on my adventure. With help of my dad and brother, I made a wood base and put it all together. It looked like this. As you can see, the water can be pumped up into the grow heads and then flooded and then drained back to the fish. The first month was filled with worrying, waiting, trying, fixing, and finally seeing results. I experienced three of my fish die, the ammonia levels go far beyond toxic, and over half my plants died. I talked to teachers who understood this better than me and identified my problem. My main problem was that I was filling up my grow bed for 15 minutes at a time. This was drowning my plants. I changed this to three and corrected other problems. It finally started cycling, and the day that it did, I was so excited. I knew that although it was difficult, it was worth it. Now I just had to sit back, relax, and wait for the plants to grow. Mm -hmm. About a month after it started working, I got my first harvest of lettuce. Now I've had lettuce, mint, chives, mint again, and basil. I knew that although it was difficult, it was really awesome that I got to experience this amazing process firsthand and really learn what works. In my trial, I also learned about the multitude of benefits. Arable soil is no longer needed for growth. The fresh water that is so covered in the world today is nearly 100% percent It's all organic, and although the cycle is set up by humans, it's all natural, and cycles like this happen all the time in nature. A plant is eaten by an animal, and then the animal's waste gives nutrients to the plants. Since this can be done anywhere, it also means fresher food faster. Fish and vegetables can be produced in a building and sold at the next one over. The input needed for growing a full, complete meal is the lowest ever, and it can still be improved upon. Although the basic idea of aquaponics has fish and plants, any aquatic animal can be used to Worms can be added to media-based aquaponics, and even chickens can be incorporated to further extend the benefits. Aquaponics can be manipulated to fit any size, space, or situation. It can be as small as a beta in one plant, or large enough to fill up factors. The possibilities are truly endless. Mine was difficult to set up, but I was on a time crunch, and now there are even kits and startup pounds. I encourage you all to take a step in the future to try aquaponics on your own. If you have a fish at home, you're already halfway there. <laughs> right now, the food, 
the world has a food crisis, and it's only getting worse. <coughs> Many people are growing up malnourished, and the numbers are only rising. Food and fresh water are hard to obtain in many parts of the world. What is needed is a low water consumption way to grow the foundations of a healthy diet, and that's exactly what aquaponics is. There are challenges to this, such as that the Western diet mainly consists of beef and chicken, electricity bills from on high, but the benefits outweigh the drawbacks. Whether the world is ready for it or not, aquaponics is the future of our food. Thank you.